I don't know what we can talk about in this nation without talking about white superiority, honestly. Who defines the meaning of God also defines the relationship between economy and God. African Americans spent $1.3 trillion last year, making us the 16th wealthiest nation in the world. Why have we not turned those riches into wealth to develop our community? Peace, family. Um, I hope everyone is doing well today. Let me tell you, we are having all types of technical difficulties today. I don't even, um, if you could, um, just in the chat, let me know if you heard our intro in the beginning. Um, it's so nice just to uh, be able to, to get online and see you guys. Uh, peace to all of our, um, our, our family that um, was here bright and early. I see Rob Moses, DM, how you doing? Um, and I just want to say peace to everybody um, in the chat. All right, so we have a lot of um, good things happening, you know, um, and I want to just make sure that everybody is tapped in to what's going on in Happy World. First, we have already kicked off our Happy City tour. We were in Detroit, my home city, the D, all that good stuff. Um, and we are, uh, you know, we had such a wonderful and nice, um, you know, turnout. And so our next city is Philadelphia. We're going to be in Philly on October 30th. And let me tell you, we are so excited because we, um, have this awesome brother. I was on his show today and he will be hosting the panel discussion that will be afterwards. And that's brother Shamari from word. Uh, radio in um, in Philly, so we are ex ex extremely excited about this event. Uh, Brother Shamari uh, is he's he's cool, very very cool. So you know we want to make sure that if you are in the Philly area, that you come and check us out. It's gonna be fire, straight fire. All right. Um, if you need any information about the rest of our our tour, you can just go onto our happyfilm uh, dot com and you know, get all the information. I'm gonna put this link up here for you guys right there. Now, you know, I, I, should, I should actually have one of our people that always sign in. We should have one of you guys come and just give, just give the next speech I'm gonna give because that's how many times I've said it. If you are um, down with Hoppy, okay, and you wanna know more information, if you wanna get tapped into our Hoppy movement, it is very important that you sign up for the newsletter, okay? The newsletter um, is packed full of um, really good information. Every month we put out um, this newsletter to all of our people who sign up and we have a health article, we have some financial one-on-one, -on -one. and then we also have another financial article, but we talk about an economic innovator that's pretty much laid the pathway for us to be where we are right now. And then we always get some happy news. And then we have a um, a black business that we are supporting, you know, in there. And sometimes it's not just one; it's like a collection of black businesses. And so it was really important that you guys sign up for this newsletter because you. And plus, the other piece about the newsletter is that you get all the information before anybody else. And so, you know, if we're, you know, gonna um, announce something special, you guys know before anybody else. Um, so it was really important that you guys just sign up for that happy film, uh, that happy film newsletter at happyfilm.com. Now, if you have not seen this movie, okay, and it is a award winning because we won some awards at a film festival, which was awesome. Um, if you have not seen this film, you've got to, you know, you've got to see it. And if you're not in any of the cities that we're going to be going to, which is um, Atlanta, DC, uh, Houston, and um, and Philly, then and Bridgeport, Connecticut. If you're not going to be around there to see it, you know, uh, in person, it's okay. You can go to HappyFilm.com and you can pick up a DVD copy, or you can actually stream it. So as soon as you're done with watching us tonight, then you can, um, you know, download it and watch it, uh, you know, watch Hoppy in its entirety tonight. It's a two hour and 12 minute documentary, which is fabulous. And actually, Asar Imhotep, who's gonna, he's gonna be joining us um, shortly, 
he is in the film. And so, um, you know, it's really important that you guys see the film so you understand the importance of Hoppy Talks. Now, next business, which is this Aket Tours, the One Africa Retur Returning to the Source Conference, which is going to be fire. And again, we have the youngest presenter on our show tonight, and that would be Asar Imhotep. Along with him, we have Anthony Browder, Dr. Um, our new, uh, we have two new people that we're adding. Um, and see, if you wouldn't tap in, you wouldn't even know this. So we have um, Dr. Bayina Bello that we announced last week, but we also have Dr. Vera Nobles. Yes, Dr. Wade Nobles will be there and his wife. See, everyone knows about Dr. Um, uh, Dr., um, Dr. Wade Nobles, but his wife is just as much fire as him. So we have, um, she's also joining our presenter um, group. We have Dr. Rosalind and Leonard Jeffries, Dr. Solange Ashby, Infudishi Juhuti Miss, and um, that's it. So it's going to be a powerful, and we, we have one more person we're going to add. We're not, we can't, we ain't talking about it right now. But again, if you are tapped into, you know, and on our, our newsletter, you're going to know before anybody else. And so um, if you want to join us for this One Africa Returning to the Source Conference, it is part of our pilgrimage to Kemet. If you want more information about this, and I'm going to put up the website for you guys, um, you just need to visit Aket Tours. Aketours.com. We have, um, we initially had two trips that sold out literally like in two weeks. And so this is the last um, variation of that trip that we will be offering. And it's from the 20th through the 28th. And it includes your two day, um, you know, the two day attendance to the conference, which is going to be, like I said, it's going to be fire. And you need $300 to reserve your spot and get tapped in. And you will be on your way to Kemet in February. It's, it's going to be fabulous. You know, I don't know when next time we'll be able to have all these elders in one place um, in Egypt, of all places, you know, dropping their knowledge about what one Africa returning to the source means. And so um, if you want to get more information, just head on over to ocattours.com. And we are actually doing this along with Anthony Browder's, um, um, his, um, you know, his organization. So it's really important <laughs> that if you guys want to see this, because once these tickets are gone, we won't be able to, um, we won't be able to, you know, have the tour. I mean, we won't be able to offer to anyone else. So if you are even remotely interested, okay, in doing this, make sure that you just go on over to Tours right there dot com and um, and put down your deposit and you'll be straight. And like I said, the youngest presenter is on this um, is on this tonight with us, and that would be Asar Imhotep, who is also in the film. So this is this is just like fabulous. Now, make sure, this is the, one of the most important things. If y'all don't hear nothing else I'm saying tonight, please make sure you like and share this video and make a comment. It goes a long way. Um, Jabari Ozazi, who um, incidentally, I forgot to tell you guys, he will be, it will be Jabari, Infudishi, Dr. Jeffries, and myself will be on the panel that will follow the screening in Philly. Jabari always says this. He was like, you got to do things in three. And so you have to send this to three other people, okay? Because we got to get the word out about, um, about Hoppy, about this movie, but really about the movement and, um, and all the things that, um, that go into that. And just for those that don't know, the Hoppy movement consists of four principles. One, love Black people. Two, support Black businesses. Three, become financially literate, and four, teach the youth the truth. So everyone and everything that we do, um, you know, even through our social media platforms everywhere, is all, it's, it's honing in, or it's it's really talking about that piece right there, which is, you know, um, you know, becoming part of this movement and, um, and really practicing those four things. And so, uh, like our guest tonight, Oh, he's about to put it. This is so good. Oh my God. This is so good. He's going to be um, bringing the, he's about to bring the fire. Um, and so, uh, you know, he's part of, this is, you know, his work is part of our mission and part of our happy movement. And so 
um, it's, it's important that you guys just get tapped in and get signed on, but please like and share this video, send it to um, everybody that you know, um, so that we can, um, you know, just get the word out. And also, if you want to send us any happy love money, okay, um, because all this stuff, stuff talk, costs some money, okay, but you can hit us on uh, our super chat, which is on YouTube. You can, you know, go right there to Cash App. That's dollar sign happy film and show us some love. And this is all about like what we stand for, which is cooperative economics. So when we, um, you know, when, when we do things, like we get flyers made or, you know, our movie, our movie was produced by, um, you know, a, a black production company. Anytime that we get money, we always try to keep it within the family. So things that we have to, you know, people who work for us, it's all a circular um, it's like, it's just a circle of love in terms of our dollars. And so anything that you give us, just know that we are definitely practicing the happy movement principles, um, as well. Um, so feel free to give anything. And if you can't give anything, like, and share this video and make sure you're following us on all of our social media platforms. Okay. So we have talked enough about all the other stuff and I'll be doing a little commercial break in the middle. I am so excited to um, just bring on our, our next two guests. So without further ado, we have Asar Imhotep and Dr. Mukunge. How are you guys doing? We are doing well. How are you? Yay. <laughs> That's good. That's good. You know, uh, <laughs> listen, for all of those that, all, that are always tapped into us, you understand that anytime we bring Mr. Asar Imhotep on, he, he is like our, he is like the brainiac. Okay. And I say that in all in the most loving way, because you make us have to really put on our thinking caps in a whole different way. <laughs> and I love it. Last time you were here, you were talking about bio biomimicry. And I was just like, I mean, and from and even now, like I use the word like, Oh, da, 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 you know, and people are like, what's that? I was like, Oh, let me tell you, <laughs> you know, and you know, so you're always like pushing us forward which I really, you know, um, appreciate um, about you. And you brought such a delightful guest who wrote a very delightful book with you. Um, so let's first um, just start off by, uh, this, if you can just tell us, um, well, you know what, Asara, we're gonna start with you first, okay? If you can just tell us a little bit about you, some people who don't know, I don't know why they wouldn't know, but they should know, <laughs> just tell us a little bit about you, and then introduce Dr. McKinge for us. Alrighty. Um, well, for those of you who do not know me, uh, I am Asar Imhotep, uh, originally from Houston, Texas, uh, but I live in Philly, West Philly to be exact, um, but back in Texas for a short stint before I return back in 2022. I am a computer scientist by trade and uh, Africologists and linguists. And I like to study African people in all aspects from uh, language to philosophy, to culture, to uh, technology, to migrations. You know, uh, I've been entrenched in this, this study for well over 20 something years. And uh, even though I'm the youngest on the on the on the Aket tour trip, uh, I've been doing this for a minute, and so only relatively recently has all that accumulated information now start to really uh, shape in, in a very unique way, in a, in a way that I think that will benefit uh, African people uh, in, in moving us forward. So, um, with that said. Uh, I have a uh, love and passion for ancient Nile River Valley studies and uh, what we call the Bantu languages and cultures. And there's this one area, if y'all know me, uh, that I like to study. And that is this little place called the Democratic Republic of Congo, which is a very <laughs> big state in the middle of, of Africa. And there is a particular people there uh, who generally are known as the Baluba people. And I was first introduced to them 
um, from Dr. Uh, Muba Bingi Bololo. And after that, I have been, you know, just searching many scholars and and information, trying to learn more about uh, the, the people in that area. And uh, I came across, I was at an ASCAT conference a number of years ago. I forgot the exact year. And um, that's where I, I first met and saw uh, our guest today, uh, Dr. Chilimalema Mukinge. And he was talking about uh, Luba, um, I'll just say philosophy in general, uh, but more in, in was more specifically, and hopefully he'll get on this tonight because he discusses it in his book, the, the different aspects of the self according to Luba tradition. And it just reminded me so much of ancient Egypt that I had to introduce myself mm -hmm. and and want to know more about you know what he was teaching. And so from there, it it you know a conversation started and a relationship built. And in 2021, um, I'm partially responsible for um, helping put this particular book together uh, for our uh, elder here, Muntuwa and Zombie, Portrait of Human as God's Special Creation. And that's what we're here to uh, discuss today. Um, and I can just read, you know, a little bit of his, his bio, um, if you like. Um, but he is a retired professor, a professor emeritus from Morris Brown College in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, while at Morris Brown, he founded the Africana Studies Department and served as its chair. His research interests to the present have expanded from family and religion among the Luba of Congo to culture and customs of the Congo, and now to the portrait of human from the African universe of creation stories and religious beliefs. In recent years, he has developed a strong interest in reformulating written academic knowledge from Luba ethnography into a language that the general public can understand and appreciate. Among his publications, he is the author of Culture and Customs of the Congo by Greenwood Press. Uh, he was born in the Democratic Republic of Congo, uh, and he is the founder and leader of Coins and Hope, a charitable ministry in Congo that provides education to the youth and functional literacy to adults in preventive health and sustainable farming. Dr. Mukinge holds a PhD in social anthropology from McGill University, Montreal, Canada. He is married. And um, Sister Felicia, you met uh, Dr. Ida Mukinge, uh, professor of sociology at Morehouse College in Atlanta as well. They have four children, Indaya, um, Makeru, uh, Muwadi, uh, Shimpo, if I'm saying that correct, correctly and Molongo, uh, Malongo. And they have three, and he also has three grandchildren, Mfumu, Ngoi, Ulaya, Kudi, Maweja, and Kazadi Mukumbaji, if I'm saying that correctly. He can correct me. Uh, I'm wrong. So with that said, we welcome to the Hopi program, Dr. Chilimalema Mukinge. How you doing, sir? I'm doing well. Hey. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yes. <Happy> so, <laughs> yes. Yes. You have a lovely wife too, by the way. Um, <laughs> this is, um, you know what? I'm just, I just can't wait she's, to start she, with this book. She's my, she's my <laughs> refuge when I have problem. Oh. <laughs> I go there. Please help me. <laughs> oh, see, I love it. I love it. How long have you guys been married? That, that's one of my blessings. <laughs> that's great. How long have you guys been married? Oh, uh, only 43 years. You said only 43 years. That's all. Oh, that's wonderful. We, we, we have uh, more to go. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. All right. That's That's what's up. That's good. Okay. So we are talking to a good family oriented 
uh, man today, which is great. So I cannot wait to hear what you have to say. But you know, one thing I just wanted to, um, you know, Asar, um, you know, Asar is a lot like um, Hoppy's director, uh, Taiki. They're very modest when they talk about themselves. So Asar, you literally uh, created a publishing company and you published Doctor. This is like your first book that, you know, that's that you published. Is that correct? Yeah, outside of my books. Uh, yeah, well, it's not technically. Um, technically, I translated for Dr. Kalamba and Sapo, uh, translated okay. from French, a book um, that he wrote and we published, but I didn't have a name for it. It was just under his his name. But this is the first publication outside of mine under Madu and Della Press. So I I'll say that. Yes. So this is really exciting. Exciting. All right. So wait, hold the book up one more time. I'm going to put the, um, um, I'm going to put the link. I'm going to tell you guys right now, listen, we're going to give away a couple copies of this book, but we're going to give it away like towards the end of, of this, um, you know, of, of this, um, presentation. And so make sure you guys are taking notes because I don't even know what question I'm going to ask yet, but I know that we are giving away four books because mm -hmm. this is just like straight up um, it this is it's straight up fire. And yes, I see somebody in the, in the comment, uh, comments that they said that if, uh, Felicia is acting like a kid in a candy store. Absolutely. <laughs> Let me tell you, anytime we start talking about spirituality, you know, African philosophy, this stuff, this is like what we are made of. And so, you know, your book, Dr. McKinge, you just really break things down in just simple terms okay um which everyone can um can just you know they can understand so can you just first tell tell the audience what made you want to write this book and what is the book about <clears throat> what uh, made me write the book uh, was um the culmination of the interest that I have had of uh, understanding the African people as they uh, define themselves and uh, they define uh, their uh, origin mm -hmm. as human beings and the what they believe in and um, what uh, they do. And um, I did that in relation to an assumption that uh, uh, human beings have had that uh, they are God's special creation. And uh, I wanted to give some meat to that. What makes... Mm a human being special in God's sight. So to know about God's sight, I had to go to what the uh, African people say, how they were created. So their creation stories, their relationship with the creator, the vision of okay. the creator himself that he is the supreme being of everything. He is omnipotent, omniscient, and omnipresent. And all that exists comes from him. That belief is shared by Africans all over the world. Mm. So if an African tells you that he or she is atheist, ask that person, where have you been? Because mm. that idea is not African. It must have come from somewhere else. Mm. And by looking at the, um, the creation stories, and I saw common themes, the common themes from across Africa that allow me to get in line, get in line. Avec, with, um, I'm sorry, with uh, 
African uh, researchers who say that beyond African religions, there is African religion. So the common trade between African religious beliefs and the common trade between their practices and the common trade between their stories of creation allowed me to come up with uh, a number, a number of uh, common themes, which I organized uh, 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 around what I call the portrait of human being. One of the aspects of the human that is uh, striking is that the human being is a spiritual being in a physical body. And that led me to search the manifestations of spirituality in the lives of African mm -hmm. people. So the African is a spiritual being. I looked at that as uh, in self. What are the aspects? I mentioned one, spiritual being in a physical body. And that in uh, at least uh, a number of perspectives, mm -hmm. uh, we are created by God and we are uh, maintained in life, sustained in life by the spirit of God within us. And mm -hmm. also, yes. God created us with special, with extraordinary powers, the powers to do things, extraordinary things. And the study of creation study, or creation stories, tells us that at some point, the original relationship that we had with God was disrupted. And we lost some of the extraordinary powers that we, we initially had. But there are still people who are born with such powers. That's mm. how we explain the existence of uh, geniuses, for example, or of people who control uh, a, a supernatural powers and the beliefs in African societies is that those beneficiaries of special powers may use them to do good to other people or to harm other people. So that uh, okay. allows us to understand the existence of the witches and the existence, let's say, of the uh, medicine man, the existence of the healers, the existence of um, uh, dream interpreters. So some are doing good to others, including uh, counteracting the, the powers of the evildoers. Okay. There is also... Okay. Okay. Do you want me to stop? No, oh, no, 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 no. I just said I'm agreeing with you. I, you know, but I'm, yeah, I, but I'm like, wait, you're giving us way too much too soon because we got to put this in the context. I don't think people are under, like, when you're, you just like casually, you know, kind of talking about this idea of, of, um, of what a human being is, a human being is. But, you know, um, I want the audience to understand that in your book, you like, you have 12, you have 12 things essentially, mm -hmm. you know, that make up what a human being is. But before we, and you've talked about a couple of them, but I want, before we get there, like how long did it take for you to, to just come up with, to, you know, to, to come up with all of this? Like how, how long have you been working on this? Oh, uh, very long time because uh, the overview that I have now was not the beginning. I started Ooh. with uh, studying uh, religion and um, uh, 
family among the Luba. And uh, okay. that's where I made my uh, very first um, research publication. And it became the landmark in the in Luba studies because uh, many people wrote uh, after me uh, uh, expanding or completing or, or um, yeah that, that stimulated many other studies and um, in the 19 in the 70s um, a researcher at Kinshasa, in Kinshasa published a compilation of studies on African religions, including uh, uh, excerpts of, uh, of mine. So that allowed me to look at the same th the themes and problems in other uh, Congolese ethnic groups, the Congo, the Yansi, the Kuba, uh, the uh, the Songe, the Lulua, and so on. Okay, so that led me to to have a broader understanding of religious beliefs and uh, practices in the Congo. Then, when I came to Morris Brown as a teacher. Um, our students went on strike requesting Africana studies. And I was assigned to develop a program for them. And I also developed a course on African ancient civilizations. And I wanted to look at how geography and economic resources lead people to development. And the first example, the most clear example was uh, Egypt. So people from the Sudan who exploring their environment gradually went from the south to the north developing the areas, um, building civilizations. They built uh, what is uh, what Nubia, part of which uh, was called uh, Upper Egypt. And they went down further, further. They united the two Egypts. Egypt became one. And the, the civilization of Egypt expanded, spread out. Some took it to Asia. At the time, the Greeks who had studied them called them Ethiopians. And they talked about Ethiopian civilizations in Arabia, in, uh, in Mesopotamia, in Elam, which is today uh, Iran and the Indus Valley. And they developed civilizations there. And internally in Africa, some went to West Africa and the left uh, traces of, uh, of um, uh, Egyptian civilization there. Um, for example, among the, the Dogon, the philosophy of the Dogon and their beliefs, their knowledge about the stars and so on. And historically, uh, they uh, they connected to ancient Egyptians. So the spirit of uh, exploration, when I start to look at it in a historical perspective, we find this, the human beings were created in East Africa, starting with the hominids. And the hominids went all over the world. 
that means they went exploring, trying to find uh, better places to, to live. And the first people who came after in uh, uh, throughout Africa and uh, Europe and Asia, there are people that they say they found them there, the first people. <laughs> and those first people were African. So they went there exploring. Mm -hmm. And going back to Africa itself, lays, uh, years later, the Bantu left the area of Cameroon and uh, Nigeria, crossed the equatorial uh, rainforest, and built civilizations south of the equator, which expanded from the equator to Southern Africa. And later on, those who migrated to East Africa, um, some of them descended to the South. That's how the uh, one of the groups that descended from there were the Karangas who built the Great Zimbabwe. So they were part of that uh, uh, group or generation of uh, uh, Bantu who came from um, uh, West Africa and expanded across Africa and, and went down. In East Africa, years later, the Nilotic went again from Sudan, from South Sudan, to East Africa. People like the Luo, for example, and the Hima. So went to the Great Lake civilization um, region where they are in, uh, in, in Rwanda, in uh, Uganda, in Tanzania, in Burundi. So the, this uh, led me to concluding that the African people, a human being, are created with the spirit of exploring the world and transforming the world beyond uh, the horizon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, okay. So, because you said like a couple of uh, traits of a human being. So can we, um, can we just kind of start and just go over the 12 um yeah. the 12 yes. characteristics okay. or traits of yeah so mm -hmm. this is why you know um i don't know why asar would just send me one chapter as a tease i don't know what that's mm -hmm. about but anyway um as i was reading this and then you know um you so eloquently talks about you know just talk about like what it means to be a human being and so before we go over those 12 you know characteristics characteristics or traits of a human being um are all people who are non-African considered human beings? Yeah, human beings are human beings. <laughs> human beings are human <laughs> beings. Okay. Well, 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 okay. What I'm, what I tried to do, was mm -hmm. to understand the human being from an African perspective. <laughs> mm, yes. Yes. Okay. yes. How the Africans. Because define the human being, how they behave as human beings. So the, yes. yeah, I, I was not making comparison of uh, with others, but I wanted to understand the Africans in themselves, the way they understand yes. themselves. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, okay, good, good, good. Okay, all right. So we're gonna get started, guys. I'm just telling you, we're giving, we're giving away four of these books. But even if you don't win a book, you need to buy this book because this is this is like a foundational um, piece of information that um, that is the key to like start to you know to really know thyself. A lot of people talk about that, you know, oh, you need to know yourself. But you know, this is again, this is part of the movement, the hobby movement. We're getting some practical information about how to actually make that statement, know thyself possible. I mean, like how to do that, right? And so, um, so yeah, let's get started. So 
you can start anywhere from the 12 uh, characteristics, Dr. Mukunge. Okay. The, um, <clears throat> one of them is that uh, the human being is uh, a body, a moving body in full mm -hmm. vitality. Yes. And um, we can trace that to creation stories. African creation stories tell us that after creation, the human beings, animals, they were living, they had no sickness and they were destined to live without dying, to live eternally. So they were uh, having meetings, discussing issues among themselves and sending delegations to God and bringing solutions. So the vitality, so I want to see what that vitality, how it manifests itself in the human beings. First of all is that living is moving. So the human beings and the other thing are moving. We move in all directions and we have a body that allows us to, that has uh, junctures, we have hands, we have knees, we, have, we live. So living is, uh, is moving. Even the creation process itself included movements and the, the for, for example, when uh, God created in the Yoruba tradition, mm -hmm. God Oldumare sent the Ashi divinity to To, f to complete what became the earth. And also, when we look at the human body itself, the organs in the body, the blood, the air, the, 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 the fluids, this movement, and the, when we look at the types of movements that they do, they are movements for ordinary life, everyday life. There are movements of dance, for example, dancing, and they are competitions like uh, uh, running, yeah, those movements. And also the vitality allows us to perform physical tasks that require strength and also to use the hands to make tools. And with the tools, we are able to transform the world around us by hunting, by uh, farming, by uh, extracting minerals, and uh, by making uh, objects and goods. So okay. the second major characteristic is uh, of being alive, being human, is being in constant movement and being the, have the, the ability of using our hands and our parts of the body to transform, to live and to transform the world around us. Next to that, okay. next to that, we have the mental power mental power manifests itself in uh, different forms. One is the conceptualization of ideas and the expression of ideas in articulate speech. Mm, being human, being alive is to speak and to speak in articulate language. Uh, articulate language that has meanings 
in the creation story of the of the Fulani and the the Mande of West Africa, when they talk about the role of the first created people, they were professionals. So God created professionals, including uh, weavers, uh, tanners, and uh, makers of things. Okay. And also there was a speech maker, a speech maker who gave the ability to speak and speaking with meaning and the ability to communicate ideas. And that ability, we have it. And a human being has the ability to articulate speech. Um, okay. Many examples, many examples that we have. First, the, the name. Personal names have meanings, and in addition to those meanings, when the there are main, uh, names of um, person that uh, the parents give you, there are names that ex uh, um, express your status in society. There are names that are titles, and uh, names that are uh, telling people about the clan that you come from. Mm -hmm. So there's also uh, games, children games, for example, games using language, challenging children, challenging each other in languages. And we have the uh, call and response speeches. Yes. Uh, how, how people like to do that. that, that that's a, a common practice in, uh, in Africa. Uh, yeah. We have expressions in songs, different kinds of, of songs expressing uh, articulate language, expressing different situations, expressing um, pride, expressing uh, commemoration, uh, expressing rivalries, and so on. So articulate speech is one. And there is also we wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Yes, Be um, yes, before you go on, I, I had a question about one of the, um, the the first one you said when you were talking about um, just, um, you know, our, our spirituality. You said mm -hmm. um, this, a spiritual being in a physical body. And you talk yes. about having powers. And you alluded to this in the beginning, too, you know, that um, there was a disruption in the world. And so there's not as many people... Um, that are you know able to ha still have that connection to their powers. Is there any mm -hmm. way that is there are there things that when you started to do your research that you found that could connect people back to their powers or you know connect them to the source? There is uh, this. Each uh, human being is created with the potential the potential to do extraordinary things, to do big things. But some have that power higher than others. Mm. So God still is with us and still is still creating individuals with extraordinary people, with extraordinary powers that the ordinary people do not have, okay? And those okay. powers, some of them are spiritual. That's how mm -hmm. the Africans explain the notion of witch. A witch okay. they uses the powers from God, but uses them to hurt other people. That's how we explain the powers that the diviners have to discover, to know things that the that are not visible to other people. And the seers, they are pe people who have spiritual mm -hmm. power to 
no events still to come or events taking place in uh, uh, distance that they don't see and and they have powers to cure diseases to the, the wow. spiritual powers that they have mm -hmm. those, those, those examples are throughout africa so we have the uh, people who are still born with extraordinary powers who can use them to do good mm -hmm. to other people or to harm other people. Okay. We have also the uh, uh, creativity, uh, artistic creativity. We find that throughout Africa and everywhere, we find, uh, they have find, for example, rock paint, painting in the rocks that tell stories mm -hmm. for a long time ago. We have uh, uh, what artists in all kinds of trades, uh, um, arts, which uh, the dominant uh, theme is the uh, ancestor, ancestral uh, figures, uh, be they in uh, sculpture or in uh, weaving or in whatever. And we find historical monuments. All year we mentioned the uh, Great Zimbabwe, but the pyramids in Egypt, the stele in uh, uh, in Aksum, which is today uh, Ethiopia, and um, the uh, small houses in uh, uh, in Mali. The uh, adobe uh, uh, mausoleums in Ma in West Africa in general. So that's part of the uh, artistic creativity that people have, and the decorations, bodily decorations, scarifications, uh, painting, yes, uh, jewelry, uh, the Maasai, for example. The, the Zulu, uh, the Guni in South Africa, uh, are expert, uh, experts, uh, producers of um, uh, artistic decorations. Okay. So, oh. spiritual power, uh, physical power, and mental power. Okay. Yeah. If we can move also, we find that. The human being is a being in a relation, in relations with other human beings. So the question that we have now is what characterizes the human beings in relations to other human beings? The first one we see is a moral, um, uh, moral. Uh, Characteristics of people, the human being, are morally bound, are community bound. They are born in the community, they are expanding in the community, and the community is kept together by moral principles. First of okay. all, the human beings are born with natural rights from God the things that they need that uh, keep their humanity uh, holy, whole, whole, okay? Mm. Okay, so, so. Yes, I'm listening. Yeah, so, um, okay, so I guess before we turn that corner, so you would say that um, one of the characteristics is that you have the first um, be a believer in God. Yes. Is that is is that like a human trait? The the Africans mm -hmm. believe that all that exists takes origin from the one 
who has always existed and will always exist. And he is the maker of everything. So creation is a fact. And there are different processes. Africans talk about different processes of creation. Uh, some are uh, classified as uh, uh, manual, like the creation among the Yoruba. They say that uh, okay. uh, the creation of the human being, uh, God uh, commissioned the Ashi divinity to make the the scripture, the structure, the body, and God blew uh, his own uh, breath into it to make it human. Uh, mm. Among the Luba, for example, uh, the people believe that God used different principles for creation. For the human being, he is the combination of the thought and the word. So he said, they said that he said, let there be gentleman. So using the word and the, the thought of what the gentleman should be, will be, and the same using, let there be a gentlewoman so that happened. So well, in short, all the creation studies they include the creation that God infused part of God's self into the human being. Oh. And that makes the human being spiritual. There is a, a inner somebody, a little man in every, a little man or woman, a little human in yeah. everyone. So yes. God is within us and around us. And yeah. the belief in, in God also sent us to believing in the uh, belief in the great spirits, divinities. God created a hierarchy of spirits. The highest number, level of spirits, uh, they are being called divinities or Oh, are we frozen? Dead spirits. Okay. Oh, okay. You know, anytime I tell you this program starts getting good, we is always frozen city. Are you still there, Asar? I'm here. It's COINTELPRO. Oh. Okay. Wait, oh, there, there we go. go. Okay. <laughs> You're back. You know what, what was Dr. I saying? <laughs> well, you know what? See, what happens, Dr. McKinney, when you're like, yeah. when, when anybody is telling some information that's going to move us forward, it's always a technical issue. Something's always happening. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Wait, we're going to. Okay. Let's see if we can. Um, we can unfreeze. He, he's going to come back in a minute. All he's going right. to come back in a minute. Okay. This, as we're um, just going to just take a little, just a, you know, a little commercial break. You guys, please like and share this video. Um, Dr. Mukinge is, um, he's breaking it down. He's telling us what it takes through African eyes. What does it mean to be a, um, to be a human being? Okay, so it's so important for you guys to like and share this video. I see Rasha Mella has joined us. Um, Michelle um, DM is still DM stay up commenting. That's what I'm talking about. Everyone needs to take a page out of DM's page. Keep commenting that you know that starts the algorithm going, and we can get more people to watch this video. This is really um, this is so good. Um, because a lot of times when we're defining like who we are and, you know, Asar, you could talk to this, you know, when we start defining like who we are, you know, we have to, we can't look through it. I mean, we can't look at that through someone else's lenses. 
you know yeah. what you think about that well th well that's the whole purpose of the whole you know theory of afrocentricity is that when we sit back and examine african conceptualizations of life and living we find that there's some unique characteristics among a large group of the populations on the continent of Africa uh, that distinguishes it from other human groups. Uh, but there are a lot of, you know, similarities with certain other groups that are, are human centered and life, excuse me, and, and earth affirming um, mm. in, in their culture. And so these, these commonalities that we, that we witness here, um, the, the only way that it can make sense is that if you're in conversation with those who live it instead of those who come from other where from from other places and trying to look at it and trying to interpret instead mm. of just telling you what it is you know um and so in in this sense like like he was going into the the concept of community right like, what does it mean to be a human in community? And what you'll find across the continent is that your humanity is the result of community. You can't exist as a human without community. That's why we have the phrase in South Africa, muntu ng muntu ngabantu. A human is, a person is a human because of other people. Mm. Like, your whole concept of being human is the result of existing and living in a human culture. And, and the idea of community is so ingrained in the African's mind that even when you talk about the individual self, the individual self doesn't exist as an individual. Just like yeah. when you go in the ancient Kemet and the self consists of the Ren, the Kat, the Ka, the Ba, and all these different variations, he talks about that amongst the Luba, how this is in chapter one, how you are, you know, um, Mubidi and Moyo. Mubidi is the body, of course. Moyo being the heart, Mashi blood. And these different principles of Moyo. Moyo is a word for spirit, um, a word for heart, a word for soul, uh, intelligence, and the whole nine. It's comparable to the Ib, in the ancient Egyptian tradition. And then, of course, we label, we, we go to a little bit to the West and still in the Democratic Republic of Congo amongst the Bukongo people. And the self consists of Moyo, the principle of life, Nitu, the human body, and Sunni, uh, the flesh is um, similar to an animal, and Fumukutu, the double or the soul of the person, uh, Vuvulu, the human body as a physical structure, Menge, the blood through blood, life sustaining principle, and a whole bunch of other things. And so all of these are in, in many traditions are deities that are, are part of the self. So you got to think about it like this. Even your, mm -hmm. your, your individual self is itself a community, which is why there's a lot of rituals trying to harmonize and getting all of them to work in sync so that yes the you know like like um yes. you know telling my age for for a lot of folks but if you remember the cartoon voltron you yes. know from from back in the 80s you know if, if you understand voltron you know that these are individual cat robots you know that that came together and uh this is dr Bukinge. So yes, but. because he hasn't popped <laughs> back on yet. I was going to say, right. I was like, you might have to check on. You know, we love our elders, but you know, this technology is a, it's a lot. It's a lot to. I'm gonna be uh, back. You know. <laughs> yeah. Um. All right. So Asar's gonna, he's gonna um, help Dr. Abakinye get back online. Um. Thank you guys for all the love and support. This is such a interesting conversation. So far, he has laid down five things that make up a human being through African eyes. You know, this is how we have to start looking at things is through an African lens um, so that we can be, um, you know, uh, so we can start to know who we are 
and to um and once we know who we are it's game over because we will be taking over stuff um and a lot of us are further along than others but we can't you know everyone has to make it so that's just what it is. So it's, it's really important for us to get this knowledge. While we're waiting, hey, listen, guys, we are going to be in Philadelphia on October 30th. It's so exciting. We love, we, I tell you, going to these cities, it's fire because we get to see all of you guys. And, um, you know, we see you guys on, like, when we, the first time we saw DM, and I, know, I don't know why I keep talking about DM today. I remember the first time we saw DM, and he, he's like, oh, my name is Damon. And I was like, oh, he's like, I'm DM. I was like, oh, my God, you're DM. Because I just know you guys from your names that, you know, that you use when you're, um, when it's, you know, popping up on chat and when you are liking and sharing our social media. So it's, you know, if you guys can get out to the uh, happy tour, that would be super cool. So we can meet everyone and, um, and really, you know, uh, like uh, Sarah's talking about this sense of community, um, you know, we can just grow that and, you know, take it to the next level. Um, if you have not signed up for our, um, What's the uh, for our newsletter? You must sign up for the newsletter. The newsletter is very important, okay? Because the newsletter lays everything down. It tells us, uh, you know, we got our five articles, which is supporting a black business. We we have um, an economic innovator. We talk about every you know month someone who has pushed us forward in terms of finances. We also um, have some financial, just one on one news, which um, we we were talking about um, Bitcoin and just cryptocurrency. Um, lately. And uh, we have a health article and we all always have a happy update. So if you guys are liking and sharing this video, please get these little likes up, guys. Come on, get the likes up, get the likes up. Um, so we hope that uh, Dr. McKinney can come on back and join us. I see that uh, Asar is working hard to make that happen. Um, and if, you know, people in the chat, if you can just shout out where you're from, we'd like to know who's who's, you know, who's who, where's everybody, you know, coming from, that'd be super cool. And uh, while you guys are doing that, it's, um, don't forget, we got the ACAT tours, we going to Africa, guys, um, going to Kemet. ACAT tours is owned and operated by Hoppy's director, Taiki Grant, and he's been doing it for 20 years. <laughs> he's literally been taking Black folks to Egypt for 20 years. Let that sink in. This brother's been doing a bunch, you know, he's been doing a lot at his young age. And so, um, you know, he's very experienced in, in doing this. And so we want to make sure that we try to uh, support. We have the One Africa Conference, uh, Returning to the Source, where we will have um, Asar Imhotep, uh, which is on the panel tonight with us, Dr. Wade Nobles and his wife, Vera, Dr. Vera no Nobles. And Dr. Leonard and Dr. Rosalind Jeffries, Dr. Solange Ashby, Infudishi Juhuti Miss, and Anthony Browder will all be in the house in Kemet in February of 2022. It is not too late. We have we have a few little seats left. I tell you, it's important for you guys to, if you can make this happen to go to iCatTours.com and I'll put it up in a minute and you know and put down your deposit. All right, we have Illinois, South Carolina. Okay, UK, all right, Mar um, Marcia, I see you in the house. Um, and Florida, all right, okay. Oh, I see Dr. McKinney is back, yay. Okay, we're gonna add him on to the, um, add him back on, let's see. There you go, yay. <laughs> Persistent. <laughs> <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Um, okay, we were, um, you will see, I'm telling you, anytime you're breaking some information down, something always mystically happens and we are all, you know, uh, you know, kicked off or something. So you were talking about traits of a human being through African eyes. And we were up to trait number six. Mm -hmm. you, see the, uh, you see that one? Yeah. Did, they, uh, did I mention the, uh, the spirit of uh, community? Yes, you did. Yes, mm -hmm. we're talking about the spirit of community. Um, the ethnic bound community member. Mm -hmm. There is that, but there is also the uh, 
the mandate of sharing life, sharing, one of the characteristics of uh, community life is sharing, widespread uh, practices of sharing. And the respect for seniority. Uh, seniority in Africa goes from uh, children to their older siblings, to parents, to mm -hmm. uh, uh, village chief, to ancestors, to great spirits and to God. When uh, um, I begin to work in Luba tradition, the first fruits of my work, I have to offer them to the elder who represents the ancestor who represent the ancestors. And they are not, uh, but, but the elders accept them and presents them to the ancestor. The expectation is that the ancestors will take them to God because the ancestors Ooh. are intermediaries, are mediators between God and the living. And they have two functions. One is that they are mediators of God. They take petitions of their members to God and bring down blessings from God. And they are elders of the family. So they distribute those to family members. At the same time, they punish those who they distribute according to the behavior of the uh, the descendants. They give blessings to those who live well in relation to other people, in, a, um, a, in a relation to the moral principles that we talked about earlier. And they punish others with uh, sterility, for example. They may uh, punish them with, with death. So they have a double function, mediators between God and the living and uh, elders of the family looking on the, over the well-being of the descendants and trying to discipline them when they misbehave. And in other religion, religions, in some religions, there's the, uh, an active category of, uh, of spirits. We mentioned the example of the Yoruba, where they have the Orishas. The Orishas yes. have two major functions. Some of them assisted God in the process of creation. Others are ministers in God's government of the earth. They have assignment from gods to take care of different uh, um, situations in the life of people, uh, like uh, those who, uh, the divinity of the water, who, who the divinity uh, who watch over the hunters, uh, the divinity uh, of fertility, and so on and so on. So the yeah. Higher spirit, uh, that belief is uh, widespread in, uh, in Africa. So they are the spirits above the ancestors. Some of them may be the ancestors who have been elevated there. The others have been created by God as uh, great spirits. They, they, that. Mm. So, so uh, Dr. McKinge, I got a question because you talk about Sure. When you're talking about the um, that uh, you know the human trait like number six uh, um, about being devoted to spirits, and you talk about um, this daily care that we have to give to ancestors, can you just talk about what that looks like? The, the care that care? we 
<coughs> the uh, throughout Africa, there are rituals of uh, um, toward the ancestors and even toward the spirits. Uh, some are prayers. They have uh, offerings. They have uh, festivals. Um, let's take the uh, the Luba for example. They consider all the blessings as gifts from God. All the good things. For example, they offer sacrifices of chicken when a the family has a, a baby, a child. A child is a gift from God. And one of the things is to, uh, through the ancestors, so they offer chicken to them. When uh, um, a happy, another happy event has occurred, when someone married the first wife, okay, is uh, a new step in life. And that make offerings to the ancestors. And the ancestors like uh, marriage stability. So when uh, a, a, a wife has been pleasing to the ancestors, the ancestors will um, appear in a dream asking for her to be dedicated to serve the spirit of the guardian spirit, uh, the guardian of the family. Okay, so the true uh, ceremonies, the wife becomes um, dedicated to the ancestor. And the, mm. the Luba like also, they praise wealth. So the persons who have created wealth come up to a stage where they are being called by the ancestors to be um, consecrated, consecrated achiever. So they do that through religious services. And when someone, uh, an ordinary person, comes to uh, becomes candidate to uh, chieftaincy, become a chief or king, they have rituals that elevate that person mm -hmm. to the rank of the spirits of um, past leaders. So through that gives him the power, the spiritual power, to protect his uh, land and his people. So wow. the hierarchy of spirits, but the all of them interacting with the human beings and uh, helping human beings in many um, uh, aspects as part of spirituality. Uh, okay. The spirituality, uh, an, an important uh, aspect in African spirituality is that the babies are reincarnated uh, Ancestors, mem members of the family who are being reincarnated. So the spirit of uh, an ancestors comes back through conception and uh, conception and uh, birth. So children have titles based on the category of spirit they uh, represent. Uh, in the Luba have about 27 categories of children based on wow. <laughs> based on their <laughs> spiritual titles. So some titles are based on 
the position of the child at birth, some um, based on the uh, succession of children, and some represent the events that have occurred in the life of uh, parents, the mothers, for example, and what the mother has done in order to, to have uh, uh, children who survive. So different categories have different rituals the uh, designed to have the child feel loved and mm -hmm. grow well and become an adult and have his own uh, or her own children. So the reincarnation uh, at birth is uh, part of common belief and they have characteristics. I told you that uh, some of them uh, are based on the position of the body. Uh, my, my, my birth title was Kabungam. Kabungam means the sorrowful one. My mother told me that I was born with my hand on my jaw. Oh, wow. And that's a, a sign of uh, uh, sorrow. So, so. And there, there are uh, children who are born with um, what? Those are open with, uh, born with uh, their eyes open. Okay. They have a title. And uh, children who are born um lying on their stomach they have their mm -hmm. title and uh, speaking of uh, succession the uh, children who are born after siblings three or four siblings of the same uh, sex have a title for example oh, the, wow. title, the title the title galula when uh, someone is born in Galula, which means that that at he or she had at least uh, three or four siblings of the opposite sex, okay. and of course there is uh, the the case of the twins. Normal births are one by one. Twins, that's special, oh. and triplets are even more special. So the, the third of the triplet has his or her own title. So the first two oh. titles as well. Okay. Wow. So, um. so the titles are maybe based on the, the number, on succession, or the position. And some of them are uh, uh, express uh, uh, deformities, for example. Mm -hmm. Some children are given the name, uh, reflecting uh, their deformities. Some are, uh, um, yeah, mm -hmm. la 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 like children who are born with uh, uh, five five fingers instead of uh, of uh, of four. Oh, no, six six fingers. <laughs> yes. Instead of five, we they they, they have their, their, their name like that. Uh, those uh, who are born with a split uh, lip. Oh, the clef, like clef. The clef, yeah. The clef uh -huh. they, yes. they, 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 they have a title. So the titles are based on the category of uh, children, and the um, rituals are designed to make the children feel loved and to grow uh, well, to become prosperous in their mm -hmm. adult life, to marry and, um, and uh, uh, beget children. Um, with mothers, for example, when uh, uh, the, in uh, Luba believes, first of all, 
mothers sleep with their children in their chest. And the tradition prohibits the mother when she gets up in the morning to leave the baby in the bed. If she does, that mm. means she's taking the strength of the baby and leaving to the baby her own weaknesses. So to avoid mm. that, the mother leaves the bed at the same time at the baby and wow. traditionally after that she will uh, she would sit in the front of the house with her legs extended and the child on on the lap give a massage to the child after the massage the she will give a, a, a bath to the child and then she will stand out outside facing the sun with uh, the baby up, offering oh, the baby yes. to, to God, and also to talking to the baby, telling the baby to grow well, to grow strong, to become adult, to become a father or mother of many. And after that, she will uh, feed the child to the breast and then um, and trust the child to the babysitter and go to the field. So uh, wow. the, the belief about the spirituality of children and what makes the children uh, prosperous in life is a part of the rituals that the parents do and the type of care they gave uh, their children. Wow. Okay. I can see that being a strong foundation for, um, for kids to, you know, feel good about themselves. And to, like you said, you know, come, um, you know, um, to contribute to the community in a, in a purposeful way, you know, that would be lovely if kids were, um, you know, were just presented that way to the world, you know, or within their communities. So, so Dr. Bikinge, Yes, ma'am. Um, <laughs> so we are, let me see, um, because I'm trying to keep track of, um, <laughs> see, you know, because you wrote the book, you're just effortlessly going through all of these and coming back and coming through. And I'm trying to keep track of these. So um, number seven, do you, remember, do you remember what number seven was? Number seven? Is that yeah, the one about... Number seven, the ethnic bound community member. Yeah, so you talked about this. You okay, talked about this, the, right? Yeah, that's about the moral principles and the, the uh, natural yeah, you rights. About this one. Natural rights. That that's where we have, for example, uh, mm -hmm. the the way I found out about these uh, the principles that uh, I have. Uh, uh, what listed here, discussed here, is uh, when someone uh, is facing a challenge um, of which he or she is not responsible, and that person will uh, make a de declaration of innocence, uh, self-examining himself loudly saying i have not killed anyone uh, i have not stolen i have not refused food to anyone uh, i have not uh, um, kept anyone from walking in public streets uh, i have not uh, violated uh, 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 a child i have not molested a child uh, i have mm. not to take uh, uh, the wife of uh, another man. I, I have not stolen. Uh, I have not refused to pay the the first fruits, the tributes of first fruits. I have not dis disrespected uh, my uh, 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 my elders. Okay, those rights, which means that there are rights and there are violations 
and there are sanctions to violations. So relationships within uh, the family, within the, the, the clan are being regulated by those moral principles which require yes. the respect of um, natural rights to everyone, which uh, uh, um, puts restraints on people's behavior because uh, if people respect my rights, I must respect theirs too, but that's the restraints. Mm -hmm. And there are mm -hmm. sanctions for violations. Okay. And, and people uh, believe in the sanctions. Um, do you want me to give an example? Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> The uh, uh, my father had two brothers. He was uh, the oldest of the three. Uh, the two younger ones came one evening from where they had been and uh, fighting, and I saw my father without saying a word just taking the youngest of the two and just pushing him to, to the ground that mm. was the end of it for respect <laughs> for him as elder but in the morning the next day the youngest one paid uh fines to the ancestors for bidding his older brother. So in the morning, wow. he brought a, a chicken. They sacrificed the chicken to the ancestors and they uh, uh, not only consumed the, uh, the children, uh, the, uh, the chicken, of it, but also they ate white clay. White, white clay is a sign of uh, cleansing, uh, with cleansing. So and, okay. they, and, and they drank from the same same cup. When you drink from the same cup, you are reconciling. You are becoming one again. Mm. So you, because the you have disrupted the relationship, but you cannot arrange it just among the, yourself. The ancestors must be involved in it. And, and there must be external signs of it as well. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Okay. Huh, that's, um, that's powerful. <laughs> that, that's you know, the, I'm just, I'm just, I'm, you know, I'm sitting here, I was thinking about my kids. <laughs> and I was like, oh, <laughs> I, this is something, I wish I would have started this a little earlier with them because that is, um, wow, that's, you know what, I tell you, when you start just understand how we, we just, we have, we have the answer for all things. You know, we thought about everything. We have something in place that's already there. We don't even have to create nothing. It's already here. Wow. Um, can I can I can I um interject just briefly? Sure. Uh huh. The I think there's a bigger implication in relation to the themes of this channel, which this would be a good segue into, because essentially what he's talking about is good human relations and in good family relations, not only, you know, with immediate family community and even the environment itself. And because the, the Hopi movement is an economic movement, as I've stated in the film, you know, going off of Dr. Amos Wilson's uh, text, and if you don't mind, I would just like to share my screen and, and read that segment of, of his text. And I think it will tie uh, all of this in together. Because um, I'm seeing some of the comments in the chat and they, and they, they don't immediately see the, the connections. Um, yeah. Let me see. So... And they also think that to. you have a um, 
they also feel like you have a DJ's voice and that you should be reading books for Audible. Uh, uh, look, I already have a a window up for ACX right now because <laughs> even at the job they keep saying that. Uh, so I may I may test it out, but uh, yeah. you would you would have to uh, show the screen. Oh, okay. Here and we let go. me know. Okay, it's up. Okay. All righty. So let me hide this. This is from Dr. Amos Wilson's uh, "The Falsification mm -hmm. of African Consciousness: Eurocentric History, Psychiatry." and the politics of white supremacy. So in this text, he states the following. We're suffering from the absence of an economic system. Money is not a system. Money is what it is. A system involves the systematic and organized utilization of money, a systematized utilization and distribution of money. Without the pattern, without the system, Without the organization, one does not have an economy. An economy exists prior to money. There were economies in the world before money was invented. We don't even have to have money to have an economic economized system. So ultimately, when we study an economic system, we recognize that an economic system at its base refers to the nature of the relationship between people. It's the systematic way people choose to relate one to the other that makes an economic system, not money. When we lack a systematic way of relating to each other, then we, have, we can have money and still be poor, have money and be robbed, which is what we are. And he continues on the next page stating, why do we suffer from this problem then? Why is it the black personality created? I try to get across the fact that every maladjusted characteristic in the black personality serves an economic function. Each maladjusted characteristic is not there by accident. It's not there simply because Europeans hate us. It's there because it maintains their economic dominance. If I've got money, I can help you, but if I distrust you, I won't help you and you may not make it. It's not about the absence of money. It's the presence of mistrust. If I will not cooperate, if you cannot rely on me, then we cannot have an economic system. Even though we may have money, in other words, a people must trust, be reliable, be dependable, have respect for each other if they are to develop a viable economic system. When they have those kinds of relationships, they have a social system and they can build and they can grow economically. And so when you relate that to what Dr. Mukinge was saying, I think this is chapter seven, if I believe, that you went on when he was given a declaration yes. of innocence from the Congo yeah. perspective. Yeah. So in the in the whole idea of of, of natural God given rights, these are to ensure the integrity of the community. Because mm -hmm. it's just like like if we, we paid attention to the um the black panther film because uh killmonger's character was not nurtured in the tradition he grew up because of the situations that happened with his father and the distancing of of him with his community he came back as an enemy of the community and all kinds of problems happened but when you do those types of rituals that Dr. McKinga talked about with the mother, you know, rubbing and dedicating the child from mm, from mm. from birth. The child knows that it is love and that it is a yeah. member of this community and that it has it has a place and an existence. And so you're already starting the child off with good human relations and and teaching it how to care 
for one another, which is one of those other principles that he'll probably get into um, later in terms of being a caretaker of other human beings. And so when you have, you know, that um, when you have those uh, those declarations of innocence that, you know, I have not killed anyone um, on page. uh, What is it? Did I skip it with my big thumbs? Um, here we go. Uh, no, I did. All right, yeah. So I was I was on the page already. So when he says that I have not killed anyone because it co- it corresponds to a natural right to life. You know, I have not assaulted anyone. The natural right to physical integrity. You know, we can skip. I have not taken another man's wife. The right to relatives, respect for one's sanctity. Like all of these have to ultimately deal with good human relations. So anything that disrupts mm-hmm. or brings about catastrophic disharmonies in in, um, in human relations, these are the things that we want to avoid. So all the rituals, everything is geared towards maintaining the integrity of community and family and good human relations. And so when you're able to do that, and everyone sees themselves as valuable in the community, when there is a problem to be solved in the community, you look towards the members of your community to be able to solve your problems. That's what an economy is. Because of course, every person can't do everything. You're going to have to outsource uh, on occasion to get certain things done. And so if I trust the members in my community and family, then I will be able to extend my hand and give them funds to maintain them for helping me solve my problem. Whether it's food at a restaurant, whether it's fixing my pipes, whether it's fixing my car, you know, helping me get a film made, da 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 da. You have to have trust. And and so it all boils down to the, the ethics and how we treat each other. And from there you build your your economy and not the reverse sometimes we want to have the 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 economic you know uh cart in front of the cultural horse and and, mm. and you, you can't you can't do it that way so uh, uh i said more than i wanted to say but i was just looking at the comments and i think he said his 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 statement segue and answered those um those questions um very well so Make sure that y'all get the book, Muntu Wine Zombie. Yeah, Perfect. see the name again. Mm-hmm. I mean, like, put the, the name of the actor. God's special book. creation. Mm-hmm. Uh, May I intervene here? Go ahead. <laughs> the uh, this chapter, uh, that this uh, uh, issue that we are discussing, mm-hmm. puts us in connection with the the other chapter that talks about free access to resources. God created us with the resources. Each, every human being must have access to the resources of the environment, access to natural resources. And one of the um, principles that keeps uh, African societies together is the principle of sharing, sharing resources. Initially, it was sharing according to everyone's needs. Uh, African societies are uh, primarily agricultural societies. Everyone had access to land, members of the community or non-members. The members, uh, mm-hmm. they they go to the lands entitled to them uh, uh, through uh, descendants. The non-members ask for permission and the super supervision of uh, of uh, the chief. And normally, they will not be refused. To have access to land, they have they had rules to to follow, and access to land. 
So the system of sharing in Africa was initially based on exchange, exchange, mm. uh, store, um, uh, trading item for item, and they introduced uh, uh, m money, but the money was a means of exchange to allow everyone to have the resources. Uh, if we don't produce uh, uh, cassava, uh, we produce uh, corn, so we'll exchange with those who produce cassava. Uh, the, uh, we have uh, goat, that's meat, but we need also vegetables, so we'll exchange. So what made the society change, the societies that we live in today, is when they introduced a system where some uh, accaparate, they took resources for them and they leave others without uh, access to essential um, resources for living. So they create a system of inequality, inequality based on the advantages, giving more advantages to those who control the resource and making others uh, less, less uh, able to have access to resources. That's why the concept of uh, development, uh, underdevelopment was initially uh, misunderstood. Underdevelopment doesn't mean uh, staying, stand still while others were going away, but it was a uh, process of being pushed back, uh, pushed back by others. So when the resources that allow f uh, physical and human of your society, that they allow to push you up are being taken away, you are being, your lands are expropriated. They, they impose uh, crops for them, for commercial crops it extends uh, the expense of food crops. So you become for, uh, more and more uh, unable to meet the, uh, to, to meet the, the, the needs. Uh, the major source of uh, good life is land in Africa. And the Europeans, when they came, with uh, including missionaries, they expropriated the Africans. The Africans says today, for example, about uh, Christianity, is that uh, when the Europeans came, we had the land, they had the Bible. But now we Africans, yeah. we have the Bible and they have the land. So yes. they, they came, not by love of Africans, but they were sent by their kings to uh, pacify the Africans, help Africans uh, accept their domination uh, by the Europeans. And they all introduced systems of uh, expropriating uh, uh, the Africans and forcing them to, to produce for the Europeans. And what they receive in return, most of the time, not even allowing them to survive. So the system of inequality, the capital system of inequality, reinforced by uh, by racism, okay? And th 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 that system uh, now forces us to recreate different relationships, different uh, strategies for, um, uh, uh, for progressing, for progressing. The problem is that we, we have here of um, people not uh, working together. Uh, I have it in my problem, that my program that uh, uh, we are talking about, the program, my, my, my charity. In, uh, in Luba tradition, we strive to be somebody. And that somebodyness 
is not associated with working together, but mm. more with consuming together. Uh, talking about agriculture, for example, about food, they said that it's produced by one, but consumed by many. Okay. And uh, I told you, I talk about the consecration of the achiever. Uh, the Luba are not a good example of collective work. When the ancestors call you to, uh, to be consecrated, part of the ceremonies is for you to show that the initial capital that allowed you to prosper came from your own work, not somebody else. If uh, uh, I become, become rich by the word of the wealth for my brother, is the brother who is the, the great man rather than, than me. So we have to learn how to work together. We have principles uh, of, uh, that praise uh, collective work. Uh, for example, we say that uh, with the collaboration of many, beans can uh, get cooked with saliva. We don't spit in the pot, <laughs> but we cook with wood. So the wood require that yeah. you, you blow, okay, on the fire to keep it. Since beans are slow to cook, the blow of one individual will not sufficient. So really blowing, the mouth becomes dry and what comes out is not the air alone, but also uh, life coming out. But if you are many of them, even though the, the air that comes from, from one individual is small, but together you will continue to do it. It splashes. Yeah. But because you are working together, you will end up cooking the beans. So the encouragement of collective work, but which is not necessarily translated in, uh, uh, in actual uh, work. And the and colonialism uh, made it worse because the, the, the people, only a few people, for example, were uh, engaged in way in the works that uh, were paid and they paid you but you have a large family they paid you less even for yourself and you have practically you have not much to share with the others and the situation has uh, even worsened after independence after independence because uh, in many areas, there had been total neglect of the people in the villages, for example. And the young people who were participating to work with the production uh, have gone away to the cities or to, to where they may have uh, uh, schools. So most of the people who st stay in the village are the youngest children and the older people um, many of them uh, becoming unable to produce enough and the means of production continue to be the whole. So what one can produce with the whole is, uh, is small. And, uh, but, and if in uh, addition to that, you have to feed many, uh, many mouths and also we, you have to pay uh, uh, taxes. So yeah. the, the system of inequality, that's the, the root, uh, the main cause of uh, disruption of uh, relationships between people, including economic relationships. Mm. Okay. Um, 
Yeah, I see someone saying, what happened to 9 and 10? We didn't forget about 9 and 10. It's just that Dr. McKinge was talking about this whole idea of um, being a steward of communities' natural resources. So we just wanted to um, highlight that. Um, so, um, all right, McKin uh, Dr. McKinge, we almost done here. Thank you for hanging in with us. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, so right here, Am I alive? you talked a little bit. <laughs> yes, you, you're still alive. <laughs> um, you talked a little bit about this with uh, moms and, uh, you know, talking about their role in a um, in a family. So like a, a number nine human trait is um, the compassion, the, the compassionate caretaker of fellow humans. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Can you talk a little bit about that? Okay. The. Uh... You see the um, different types of uh, care for uh, the fellow human beings. One is uh, uh, food and housing, food and housing, so hosp hospitality. Uh, not only do we have, uh, we define our responsibilities toward the family members, but toward our uh, guests as well. Uh, in uh, all African villages, uh, people build uh, uh, their uh, houses with provision for visitors, for provision for visitors. And not necessarily the visitors that you know, but those or others. Um, it was a tradition, for example, that someone traveling uh, away from home, when the night comes, that person will go into the village and uh, ask the place to, to, to sleep. And they will not only uh, house the person, they will give a uh, that person food as well and will go away. Uh, sometimes uh, when the uh, the residence of the chief is close to home, uh, close to where the person is going, the person will go to the chief's place and ask for housing. That Ooh. happened to me and my brothers, uh, my brother who were coming from a village and the night came when we were uh, crossing uh, the village where the chief was, we went to the chief's uh, uh, residence and asked for a place to, 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 live, uh, to stay overnight. They did and they fed us in the morning, we kept uh, going. So oh, wow. um, in, in, uh, in Luba compound, um, uh, the wives have their houses, but usually there would be a house in the center or devoted to uh, welcoming visitors. That's where the visitors will stay. It also oh. depends on the status of the visitor. Uh, some uh, may uh, uh, sleep in the same uh, 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 house as the uh, as the owner. Uh -huh. If there is no enough bed, uh, by respect, the owner will uh, sleep on a, a mat on the floor and leave uh, the bed to a guest uh, higher in status. Wow. So the, okay. the obligation to house uh, not only family members, uh, house and feed, not only um, family members, but uh, all God's children who, who pass by there. Like, wow. Speaking about sharing food, in the village, uh, men usually eat outside. Uh, in the past, they will it at a place where the bypassers can see them. And someone from those 
eating, will yell in their direction, inviting them to come, uh, inviting them to come and eat. So, and, and, and the, the, there's always room for someone else to to, to, to come and eat. Uh, yeah. The oh, wow. uh, meat, meat, meat is uh, scarce in Luba society. So the meat is distributed before uh, eating. So when someone comes like that, or a little one, everyone will give him uh, a little bit of what they, uh, they had. So that they, oh, so they nice. can participate in eating. So the principle of sharing and the responsibility toward uh, guests, uh, feeding them and uh, giving the house. And of course, there is a child care. Children uh, are born uh, helpless. All they can become is uh, what the parents do. And um, African mother, Luba mothers, take care of uh, their children even before the children are conceived. The way they behave with ways that they think may uh, uh, harm the conception, they avoid them and they uh, practice those that, uh, um, that we will allow uh, stable conception and uh, and uh, li li live birth. Um, uh, for example, they know that the things that mothers see, uh, scarce things, for example, will have a negative effect on the baby in the womb. So more pregnant women avoid those uh, things. They, they avoid them because they know that they may hurt the baby in the womb. And um, um, Dr. Fukiao that uh, um, uh, Asar, Asar knows well, uh, talks about uh, self-healing. Self-healing is a, a result of uh, the, what happened to the child at the time of conception. He's mm. saying that the parents' feelings and the parents' uh, uh, anxieties or whatever they have done and their history is uh, transmitted to the child and the child may be born without enough natural strength because of the uh, parents uh, and the state in which they were at the time of uh, conception and during uh, gestation. So the idea that the child must be taken care of uh, both before, during, and after birth. And after birth, yeah. we have already talked, talked about the rituals they do uh, depending on the spiritual uh, status of the child. And, but, and there's more than that, seeing the child, teaching the child uh, how to to sit? How to uh, to uh, crawl? How to walk? And continue to uh, uh, educate the child so that the child becomes a prosperous adult. Uh, in many African societies, they have uh, initiation. They have initiation. That's the, the time that they dramatize the transition from uh, youth to adulthood. So the child is, they make them uh, participate in the activities uh, of the adults and uh, the restrictions that are, it's, it's hard, it's hard. Just the purpose is to cultivate in them the virtues of an adult who will become uh, uh, responsible for uh, uh, for society. The Messiah, for example, the Messiah have uh, uh, different functions for age categories. Uh, the category of young people moving 
into adulthood. That's the ones that have the, the major responsibilities of um, protecting the cows, of uh, uh, firing the, those who, who steal cows, so protecting the family. So the idea of uh, uh, educating, raising the child, so the child can, can become a responsible adult is a part of the care that the parents everywhere have. Wow, uh, it, yeah. Of course, there is a care for the sick, and care, care for the dying. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, for the dying, uh, the there is uh, the rituals are designed to help the person have a good death, a good death. And there are ceremonies of reconciliation between the dying and the family members. Um, rituals of confession. If the one has done something that might have hurt uh, the person who is sick and dying, has to uh, retell his cellist and um, participate in rituals designed to reconcile the the dying and so those who are alive and there is also uh, the uh, farewell the farewell speech in uh, in chiluba uh, among the luba uh, is addressed to to the dead person so the others tell that person each one coming say that uh, Go well, uh, greet our ancestors, and but in telling that if I'm responsible for your death, take me along. Don't let me lie, uh, live, continue to live. But but if you are dying because you have done wrong to somebody else, or you'll have defend yourself to the ancestors, we have nothing to say. So there's that confrontation, moral confrontation, not only to the living, but to the dying person. And uh, the more, more, most Africans don't have the notion of uh, hell. It, um, the Christians have taught us, but hell for them is uh, expulsion from the community. So it says that People who have done wrong, some of them are rejected by the ancestors and they become errant spirits. Errant spirits have no, they, they're out of community. So being mm. expelled from community, that's a hell. Uh, yeah. And if, if you, you die, since we believe in the eternity of the soul and you will become a ghost, that's the kind of ghost that... Uh, uh, people find by uh, by by the rivers, which uh, the ghosts that strengthen um, that threaten uh, people. So mm. the taking care, not uh, only of the living, but those who are dying, so that they can uh, die in uh, uh, in good state, that will uh, allow them to be accepted by the ancestors. Yeah, you know, these are some things we need to be doing right now because I don't want to be exposed to my community. And I think that um, this is a way, like, you know, these rituals that you're talking about and just this way of life and how um, uh, African ph philosophy teaches you how to just, um, just to look at the world. It's like, if we started doing this, we wouldn't have crime in our community, you know, because we wouldn't want to take away anyone's natural rights. And, you know, once we, and it's just like what you said before, Asar, once you start to build this trust amongst each other, we're, we're unstoppable. It's like once we start trusting each other, we're literally unstoppable. Wow. Um, Dr. Mugenge, you're hanging in there. We got two more. <laughs> two more, okay? Just two more. Two more hours. Um, <laughs> no, no, not two more hours. Um, no, we have two more right here. Number 10. Number 10, 
we have number 10. We already did number 11, and then we're going to do number 12. But number 10, and um, and just to, um, just a, a quick, you know, you guys make sure you like and share and uh, liking, sharing, and comment on this video. And I want to say peace to everyone in the chat. Um, I just saw Den, uh, Dennis, Dr. Ken Harris. They were all with us in Detroit. Dr. Ken Harris, he runs the National Black Business League. He is turning up some stuff. We, you're going to hear about it later on on Hoppy. So um, make sure that you guys are liking and sharing the video. Oh, wait, where's my, Dr. McKinney McKin get going? He needs to take a break I, from his coming. own book. I said, give me a minute. I'm coming. Oh, okay. All right, cool. <laughs> All right. So while we're waiting for him, um, Asar, I thought you put the link in the chat. Um, thank you. I can't put it in on YouTube. I'm not, I don't have a, uh, what is that? A, a mechanics. I, I'm not on that level. So I had to do it through YouTube. Uh, not YouTube. I mean, Facebook. Oh. Okay. Let's but I see. put the, I put the, I put the link uh, in the back chat for you. If you can okay. put that in, in the YouTube. Yeah. I, you know, we can't yeah. post from back here. Uh, yeah, you know what? Yeah, I have been putting, I put it in there earlier. So guys, let me tell you, you want to get this book because, you know, there's so much um, about this. When you, you know, he's just giving you a little bit about each of these things that uh, characteristics of a human being through African um, eyes. But if, when you read his chapters, they are so much filled with so much more information, more detailed Um you know, uh, just the summary, which is the last chapter. Yeah, this, in his, this um, doesn't book. even... Wait, is that the last chapter? Yeah, the last chapter is just the summary. So that's that's what I gave you. And, that's, um, and let me tell you, what he's saying right now is like a little piece of the summary. So imagine, you know, have uh, reading this book. This is great. How, how many pages is this book, Mr. Um, Publisher? From beginning to end, we're looking at about 335. And that's just from... Wow, first that's what's up. page to index, but yeah, so it's it's, it's a three hundred pages of of deep African thought, and so yeah, yeah, even what he's he's touching on here today is just is just scratching the surface. It's just scratching, uh, yes, it's just scratching the surface. Um, all right, Doctor Bikinge, um, we are uh, we are up to number. 10 right there a freedom seeker and nation and nation builder yeah we, we have already uh, uh talking part of that we look away and look at the african societies we see a uh, uh, desire for autonomy people uh, want to govern themselves mm. to be in control of their own resources. So that's at uh, different levels. And um, the, the, at the national level, one of the things that they do is uh, the policies for maintaining national unity. So I have looked at uh, different uh, African societies to see what methods they used to maintain national unity. Mm -hmm. uh, the Ashanti of Ghana, for example, uh, used what I call the uh, integration of the directorate. They used to be three different kingdoms. So at some point, those kingdoms united but bringing together the strength of each one had, putting them together. So one was uh, good in uh, uh, economy, the other in uh, military, and the other in political organization. So they put those together and they created the the stool, the stool for the uh, Asantehene, yes. for, for the, the king, the, the stool sim, symbol of unit, of, of unity, 
and the leaders mm -hmm. who used to be leaders of different uh, uh, di di different uh, chiefdoms become the directorate. Okay. Another example, the example of the the Cuba. The Cuba had a, a system of democracy at different levels. Um, at the first level, level of the, the village, everyone uh, were mem uh, there was um, uh, they were part of the political system, and but they, they had a representative sent to the higher level, and that one to another, up to the king, up to the king. So that representative democracy was natural to mm -hmm. the system. In addition to that, the Kub also had a specialization by uh, integration of ethnicities. So people of different ethnic group who became part of the Cuba system were allowed to develop the type of the economy that they had, that the economy became the, the Cuba economy. Those who were, uh, the, were farmers, do that. Those who were strong in uh, in uh, making clothes, uh -huh. so mm -hmm. the national economy be became uh, the uh, integrated integration of the specialized economies of the constitutive uh, clans that became part of the uh, the kingdom. Uh, the Okay. The, the Lunda, the Lunda had a system of um, what is called um, uh, succession. Uh, the, when the new king came in, that king becomes uh, family members of the family of the outgoing king. So the, the, the titles that the king had in his uh, family become those of the new, the new king. And the, um, the chiefdoms, depending on the kingdom, part of the kingdom, were not destroyed. They kept their own uh, powers. So there was respect of the existing system, which uh, uh, the respect of what is called as independent or indirect rule. So there was no oppression of the central government on the, the constitutive uh, chiefdoms, but, mm -hmm. uh, but instead the leaders became members of the, the same family so the new family, the new chief, acquiring the family rights of the uh, predecessor. Okay. So in in, in this case that when we are the same family, we are we are going to work together rather than having uh, those who came in as a, as exploiters of those who were there before. Uh, yes, we, we know about Absolutely. what the we know about what the Shaka did. Shaka was oh, wait. Uh, <laughs> wait, 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 Doctor Mukinge. We sure. are we want to um we first of all we're gonna leave leave a little something so people can read the book. Okay, and I don't want to run out of time. Okay, you are right but because that this, usually this is the time that I go to bed. You are right. Go ahead. <laughs> yes. Um, okay. So your the, the your your last trait of being a human being, um, the explorer and transformer of spaces and civilization builder, right there. Um, we have we spoke about that when we talked about uh, the hominids who went to place about how yes, the yes. Ethio Ethiopians, how the the Bantus, and the yes. Yeah, we, we have covered that. Oh, we covered? Then we done. 
done. We done, Dr. McKoongie. McKoongi. See, look at that. Listen, guys, this, this, I mean, thank you so much. I have to first, let's start off with that. Just thank you. You're going to have to come thank back on. And yeah, you know what? You actually, you might have to come on 12 more times. And each time we just take one chapter and break it down <laughs> because you have so much information. I cannot wait to get my copy. And speaking of copies, if you guys have been paying attention, okay, I'm just going to put up the, um, the email, okay? Our, um, our infamous infohoppyfilm.com email right there. All right. So the first, um, you know what? We, we need the first four people to write down all 12, all 12 traits of a human being. And the first um, four people to just email us um, that information will get a copy of Dr. McCungay's book, which is... Um, being um, published by our brother right here, Asar Imhotep. And, uh, and Asar is um, not only going to be, uh, he's, he's in Hoppy, the documentary, but he's also um, going to be presenting at the One Africa Returning to the, Re Returning to the Source Conference in Aswan, Egypt in February. So this brother's doing everything. That's what's up, Asar. Um, Wow, you know, I'm so happy that you introduced us to Dr. McKingay. You know, even though we're thank keeping you. him up past his bed, his bedtime. Um, but yes, Th thank you for people, the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, so yes, family, right there, info hoppy at gmail, and um, and oh, I'm gonna put the, I'm gonna put it right back in the chat again. Um. If you want to, if you are not, if you don't want to like play, um, you know, play the game of chance <laughs> and, uh, you know, and, um, and not, uh, you know, get a book from us, please. I'm putting it right here in the chat, the actual link. It doesn't do any service for me to put the link up on the screen because you can't touch it and go right there. But right there, you can just hit the link and get your copy. And, you know, you need to pick up your, a copy for yourself and a copy for someone else because part of the happy movement is um, teaching the youth the truth. And this right here is like a foundation for how we should just be looking at everything, you know, um, through African uh, through an African lens. So thank you so much, Dr. McKinge. And thank you, Asar. Thank you. Yeah. Thank Asar, you do so you much. have some... Yeah, thank you. Asar, you have any uh, closing remarks you may have to say? No, I'm just, uh, <laughs> you know, visit maduandelapress.com, get your copy of the text, or you can go to amazon.com. Um, and it, this has nothing to do with the fact that I'm involved in any way with, you know, uh, helping the book to come out but it as just as a scholar you know who is interested in african culture and history this is a very very valuable text and i guarantee you like i i was editing it waiting for it to be done so i can quote it in some <laughs> other research that i'm doing you know in the in the future because it 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 has that much valuable information and not only that you're going to be picking Absolutely. up new vocabulary words because he he's introducing you to a lot of chiluba words and then of course any other kind of words that are in in other uh, african languages that is relevant to the subject at that particular point so you get a chance to start thinking you know using the language and and really getting deep into and and start to put the meat to the bones of a, a lot of stuff that you may be hearing when it comes to African uh, culture, uh, philosophy, uh, religion, spirituality, and um, and so it's just it's just a great text to have, and um, so you know I encourage everyone not only to do that but to like and share this video so the yeah. more people who know about uh this conversation and about dr mukinge the the more we can spread the the good word as uh is traditionally yeah. said 
about the the value of being human one and the value of mm -hmm. being an african human and that's ultimately what i argue is at the heart of of african religion and philosophy it's an art of of how to create value you know within yourself within your community within your family and 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 to learn the the harmonic dance of it, the exchange of life forces you know between uh human beings and and nature itself and so you get to to learn the the, the one two steps of this dance if you know you you read and comprehend what is in this particular text so uh with that i say thank you first and foremost for for having us and um it, it is a great honor again to be back on the program and to have uh to share this knowledge uh with with you and, and it's also a good thing because you know a lot of people be wondering where do i get this stuff from where where are these people you know i'm like they <laughs> exist they live they're they're elder you can speak to them like here, yeah you know? and so you, now you're 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 getting it from you know the the source or a source you know from from these these cultures that i'll be reading and 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 synthesizing and putting putting together for us to have these conversations so it's 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 beyond me it's who are the who are these scholars who are these people and start putting that um uh, faces and flesh to names and and this is what uh these these types of conversations allow us to do so again thank you uh thank brother taki thank the whole hoppy uh family those in the chat those who are listening and ain't in the chat and those who are catching the <laughs> archives uh and watching us later so much love and light yeah. to you all oh thank you thank you and you know you guys um asar Imhotep has his own uh youtube uh show as well which is very oh my gosh it's, it's really good so you you guys have to follow him on youtube it's mm -hmm. you just put in asar Imhotep right yeah it's just a sorry motel it's just a yeah, sorry yeah, motel yeah. He, yeah and he has a nice little um uh like red and yellow beautiful template with all his nice and videos are nice and organized on there so <laughs> make sure you uh check the brother out um you know it's all about spreading the love so thank you so much Asar, and thank you dr mckinge and please come Th back okay Th thank you thank you thank you <laughs> all right <laughs> bye-bye bless you okay bye <laughs> bye -bye. peace okay that there you go um wow such a treat you guys um hopefully the first uh four people um you know you put down all 12 traits it's gonna be you know um this book is uh is is fabulous and if you don't you know if you don't win just please buy the book anyway and pick up a copy for somebody else that's super super important okay guys so before i leave we are in philly we are in Philly in 15 days on October 30th. Um, go to our website, happyfilm.com. I will uh, put that up here. Go to our, our um, happyfilm.com right there. You can do everything, get, get signed up for the newsletter. If you, we are not gonna be in your town, just you can um, still get a copy of Hoppy. You can still see it. You can get the DVD or you can get the digital download. Um, but most importantly, and we have gear, we have t-shirts, we have Taki's first two films, which, um, is the, uh, Nubia, the untold story and the Tekken. So, uh, it's super important that, uh, you guys hit that happyfilm.com cause you can do all types of stuff. If you want to show us some, um, happy cash app love right there, um, dollar sign, happy, happy film. Please, um, family, make sure you are liking and sharing this video. Uh, this, this is really good. This is, you know, a lot of times we talk about how are we going to, you know, get something done? How are we going to come together? He literally just laid out the blueprint to make that happen. So make sure that you, um, you uh, check out the link that's in the chat and buy this book. <laughs> okay, it's, it's like super important. It's the foundation. It's a foundational book. All right. So um, that's it for me, fam.
happyfilm.com to get everything you need. But um, until next week, and we have a really good one next week on Tuesday. We're going to be back kind of soon. We have Professor Griff and Professor James Small, two professors. <laughs> so Professor Griff and Professor James Small will be on Happy Talks on Tuesday. All right. Peace, fam. I don't know what we can talk about in this nation without talking about white superiority, honestly. Who defines the meaning of God also defines the relationship between economy and God. African Americans spent $1.3 trillion last year, making us the 16th wealthiest nation in the world. Why have we not turned those riches into wealth to develop our community?